Hi, welcome back to Tony's Cool Tools. If it's your first time, thanks for stopping. Today's video is not a tutorial, but I'm going to show you how I save hundreds of dollars a year. Before I continue with the video, I wanted to make an announcement. There's going to be an event on May 6th. Mark it on your calendar. Everyone is invited. We're going to have a Hoosier Hysteria. Mike, Mike from k and Firewood, you should check his channel out because that's where all the information is going to be. I'll have it posted in the info section below. And you're probably wondering what Hoosier Hysteria is. Let me tell you. We're going to be cutting and splitting firewood for the Howard County Veterans Organization in Greentown, Indiana, which is just east of Kokomo, Indiana, for those of you who don't know. A number of YouTube channels will be there as well. Myself and Chris from In the Woodyard are planning on attending as well. Now Mike will have all the details, but he is looking for some help. As I mentioned, everyone is invited. Bring your saw and your PPE. That will be necessary due to liability for the Veterans Administration there. Mike is looking for several people who might want to bring their dump trailers and their skid steers if available. But please, contact Mike. He's working on a list so we don't have 50 splitters and one skid steer. I know this is going to be an awesome event. And you'll be able to see a bunch of us YouTubers there. And we'll all have our equipment. So if you haven't tried a 500 steel saw or a 592 Husqvarna saw, we'll have them there and you can check them out. The Woodhounds attending like to share their toys and their experiences. Check out this picture. This is the price at a local retailer, $6.59 for a one pound LP bottle. That's ridiculous, but that's what they're getting. And I'm gonna show you how with this $10 device, it's gonna cost 58 cents. And you're wondering how. The first thing is, I don't go to the gas station, to the Home Depot, or to a hardware store and get an exchange tank. When my tank is empty, I take it to the LP dealer and have him refill this. It costs me $11.64 for this 20 pounder. And technically, I could get 20 one pound bottles out of this tank. The other reason I refill these is last year we had a shortage of these LP bottles. And I'll tell you what, we couldn't find them around our area. And it was awfully cold ice fishing last year for a lot of people. And I don't even want to think about our northern cousins in Canada, what they're paying for one of these. I think that's why they're burning wood a lot. As you can tell, we have a lot of accessories here that use the one pound bottle. From cooking, to heating, to lighting. And who doesn't like to be able to push a button and have an instant fire. Starts everything. And you're probably wondering, I have an ice auger and it uses LP bottles as well. It is the most dependable ice auger out there with the LP gas. I don't have to worry about it gumming up the carburetor or anything. The only problem is I have to put a little boot on the bottom because if it gets below zero, it frosts up and it doesn't work as well. But that's all, other than that, it's fantastic. And my most favorite accessory is the mini dragon here. It keeps me far away from trouble and I can light all my fires in my outdoor wood boiler or my fire pit. And it's real easy and comfortable to use. And as far as keeping us warm, these buddy heaters are awesome. We use the singles in our ice shanties and the doubles in the deer blind. It uses two bottles, but gives you a lot of heat quick. It's definitely not expensive to fill these one pound bottles. You only need about four or five items. The first thing you need is an adapter. I'll have the information at the bottom where to pick these up. I got these on Amazon and I'll explain a little bit more about the different types of adapters that are out there. You'll need a 20 pounder of fuel, definitely your PPE, glasses and leather gloves or some type of gloves. 
the LP gas is so cold it will burn you if you have it on open skin. So be cautious about that. I use a wooden skewer or a drift punch and I'll show you how I use it in a moment. And lastly, you need an accurate kitchen scale. All right, let's get started. As I mentioned, there's two different types of adapters that you can get, internal and external thread. And I'll show you that in a moment. This one happens to be an external thread. And right here, I just screw this on. And this is the standard righty tighty lefty loosey. So that just goes on there. And then your bottle will go right on here. But they do make another version that goes on the inside of these threads, like this. And the thread on this is left-handed, not right-handed. So be careful with that. You'll also need a crescent wrench if you're using the internal threads because it doesn't have a collar like this one does where I could get a good firm grip on it and I don't need a wrench. And the only difference between this adapter and this adapter made by Flame King is that it gives you this valve here for convenient filling of your bottles. And we'll be showing that momentarily. Now the preferable area to be refilling your tank is outside. However, today it's snowing and it's about 20 degrees. So I figured I'd do the video inside. Previously I showed you a wooden shish kebab stick or a drift punch. And what I use this for is the first thing we have to do is make sure there's nothing inside these tanks. Empty them totally out so that there's no gas or air inside. And the way you do that is even though this is aluminum and uh, a Schrader valve is brass inside, I don't want any sparks. So I use the wooden stick here and I press down and you're not hearing anything. But here's one that's empty, but when I weighed it, I knew it wasn't empty. And here you can hear the sound. And you want to make sure you do that outside and not inside. So I'll be taking all these outside. And as I said, make sure you have your PPE on and your gloves when you're doing this. The foul smell that you get out of here is like Chris or Kenny in the woodyard when you've driven with them after having beans. It's terrible. It smells like skunk or rotten eggs. And that's a chemical that the company puts in so you could identify there's a leak. So I'm going to go outside and purge a bunch of these tanks. Everyone calls this the Coleman style tank. It's a one pounder, but regardless of whether it's this style, short and stubby, or the long one, they both use the same thread. And the process is the same for filling this one or this one. And there's a company called Flame King that makes refillable bottles that you can buy as well. A little bit more heavy duty than the Coleman. Not that it truly matters, but when I buy these one pound tanks, I like to get the ones that are flat at the bottom as opposed to these that have this curved section in there. These seem to sit better than this. It rolls around a lot. No big deal, but that's just something to think about. The other thing I'm pretty anal about is I ask my kids and everyone who gives me these, when they take an empty tank off of their accessory, there's a cap that goes on there. And whether it's the white one or black one, it doesn't matter. I ask them when you take one off, put this back on the empty one, it definitely saves the threads. And when they sell these two packs at the store, I usually keep the holder. It's really nice and convenient. As you can tell, my family goes through a lot of one pound LP bottles. So it's beneficial and cost savings for me to refill these. Here's why a kitchen scale is so important, and that is these two are Coleman bottles and they're identical. They come in at 14 and a half ounces, just shy of a pound. This is a different manufacturer, still looks identical to this, but when I put this on, it comes in at 15 and 7 eighths. And I have to know that because I don't want to put anything more than 16 ounces or less in the tanks. There are some people that say you should freeze these before filling them. 
that more gas will go into a frozen bottle than in a non-frozen bottle. I've tried it both ways. It doesn't matter. I may get a fraction of an ounce more if it's in a frozen bottle, but it doesn't make a difference, so I stop doing that. I do it at the room temperature or whatever I'm doing outside. And most of the time, I'm filling these bottles in the wintertime, not in the summertime, because that's when we use them. So that's what I refill them. And I try to have all these filled late spring so I don't have to worry about it at the beginning of the hunting season next year. If you've ever gone to the gas station and picked one of these up, it does have liquid inside and you can feel it sloshing around inside. That's the liquid propane. So if I were to take this bottle and just screw it on here and turn the valve on, I would get minimal amounts of fluid inside here. All I'd get is more gas than anything because the gas is on top or the vapors are on top. All the liquid is at the bottom. So you would think we have to flip this upside down like this. Now, as you can see, there's not a lot of room at the bottom for me to get my hand in. So I got to push this across the table and turn it on. And it's filling up right now. And it'll take about a minute and a half to equalize. And then I'll have to purge some of the air out and redo this again so that I can get up to my one pound. Okay, I don't hear any more hissing. I'll turn the valve off and we'll see how much went into the bottle. We have one pound, five and a quarter ounces. And if you remember, we were at 14 and a half ounces. So I have to purge some of the air out of here and refill it again. Normally I'd have a table that I could get my hand underneath here and I'll show you a different way of doing it momentarily. That's a little quicker. And let's weigh this. So I'm at 1.13 and a half. If you remember, we were at 14 and a half ounces on an empty can. So I don't want to do any more than this. I want to underfill it. That way I mitigate the issue of me overfilling it. And it doesn't matter if I'm an ounce short or so, I just grab another bottle. And just to mention, after I fill this, I would put painter's tape on here and put an R to know that this is a refill and not a brand new bottle. Now, because I filled so many of these, I went ahead and purchased a Flame King adapter and stand. The Flame King kit is no different than the adapter here. The only thing is they give you a stand and this adapter is just a little bit more convenient in a vertical position so I don't have to be bending down looking up at the adapter. I wanted to mention after your finish, if you just want to double check everything, you can get a spray bottle with soapy water and soap this area here and the Schrader valve here to see if you see any bubbles coming out. And if you see any, you know not to use that one. Set it outside, let it purge by itself, and then discard it. Don't use it. And naturally, I see a lot of these at the shooting range. Guys love to shoot at them. But now that they're so hard to get, I don't see them anymore. Now I did want to point something out. If you go online, there's all sorts of adapters for filling these one pound bottles. But let me read you what's on the back of this cylinder. It says, never refill this cylinder. Refilling may cause explosions. Federal law forbids transportation if refilled. Penalty up to 500,000. Yes, 500,000. Fine and five years imprisonment. So far, I've heard of no, no explosions out there. And I'll tell you what, we've been refilling these for years with no issues. So it's just like the law about not putting gas in an unmarked container. You know, you're doing this at your own risk, just like when you pick up a chainsaw. So just wanted to let you know that. Now, once again, Flame King, this bottle is truly refillable. It's heavier than this bottle here. The, the body is heavier on here and they specifically have approval for refilling this. So you can buy these. However, this bottle ranges anywhere from 
$16 to $40, depending on where you go to buy them. And there was a shortage on these, so I don't know if they're available or not. But we've been filling, refilling these for at least 15 years now and haven't had an issue. But that's only me. Just wanted to let you know. I sure hope you found this video informative. And if so, please like, share, and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, please. And remember, pass it forward. Make the world a better place. And don't be a tool. Watch Tony's Cool Tools. Until I see you next time, thanks for stopping by.